Oh, she's got a fantastic life. <laughs> I'd love to have had a life like her when I was a teenager. <laughs> Fionn Griffiths is one of the top professional athletes. Currently she is ranked in the top five in the world in her chosen sport, but you probably haven't heard of her. We followed Fionn to Fort William as she prepared for the first round of the World Cup series. I've been racing is it four years now, coming up five. Um, downhill is basically a discipline within cycling, which is um, basically we start at the top of a mountain, they set a course marked with tapes or some kind of ski poles and markers, um, all the way to the bottom, and you, basically it's the fastest time racing against the clock to get down the course. Second position for Fiona Griffiths. Second place, not bad. Yeah, it was alright. I mean, the track um, was pretty technical at the top. There's a lot of rocks and that thing through. And it's, but no, it was fun. It was pretty challenging in a few places. Uh, ended up second today. So, so Tracy just beat you? Yeah, yeah, she got by two seconds, so yeah. it's always the case. She eventually. came onto the scene really, really quickly and she beat me for the whole of the 2001 season, pretty much. Um, and that certainly spurred me on, because up till then, I, it kind of been plain sailing-ish for me. So she's definitely the person that's made me train hard in the winters for racing in the UK anyway. Um, and I think we've both just done each other a lot of good. We're going to push each other and uh, hopefully take British females riding to another level and take on the French hopefully next time. Right to the Giant National Point Series. Helen Gaskell, Fionn Griffiths and on top of that, Tracy Mosley. We get her eventually. Yeah, one of these days. I mean, I usually have a slow start to the season, so. So it's on to the full World Cup next week? Yeah, Fort, Fort William World Cup and um, hopefully should do all right there. On the way to Fort William, we stopped off in Stirling to do some training with Stu Thompson. To be at the top of the sport you have to train a lot more than a lot of people think. If you look at the list at the World Cup and you look at the top 20 people, you'll know that they've all been training really hard for the last five, six months. I could be anything in the world that blew. I would be a bat and come swooping after you. I try and ride most days. And we'd go to the gym like okay, three, three days a week and then we'd go either ride some kind of motocross or bikes or something other most other days. I could be anything in the world that blew. I would be a bat and come swooping after you. You do have to be fit. That's a bad one. Stu, back me up. Come on. The thing that was a stick at like downhill was a stick at it and Pete is like we have fun and I think maybe because it's there are quite laid back sports, people just think, oh, they're not real sports, you know, you don't need to train for them and everything. But yeah. this is just the fun bit, you know, you do we still got on the cross country bikes and still got on the road bikes and go to the gym or whatever. Because it's an extreme sport um, and it is dangerous, that that doesn't really take away from the fact that we are athletes and we do take what we do seriously. Just about to head up to Fort William. There's a World Cup race on up there. Um, hopefully, I'll do all right. So. What are you racing downhill? Downhill and four cross. Um, so yeah, it should be all right. Unfortunately, I haven't won any World Cups as yet. Hopefully, this year will be the one. I've had a few seconds and whatever. I had second to twice at the World Championships. I've got two silver European medals too. The World Cup series brings together the best riders from all over the world. There are five rounds, three in Europe and two in Canada. Round one is at Fort William, Scotland. To win in front of your home crowd would make victory taste even sweeter, especially if it was your first ever World Cup win.
I did my first national championships on a bike that my dad had built and I won it, which kind of surprised a few people and myself alike. But then I kind of I knew that it was something that I wanted to do and something that I could be good at if I wanted to, so I kind of kept progressing and big old steep learning curve. Did you get paid at all or not? I used to it's so much pressure in the industry to like do well and whatever. If people don't pull out the results I think that companies are scared to put money into the sport yeah. and whatever. Well I was speaking to Rob Warren earlier and he said it's just lost its glamour I think because a lot of the big bike companies and things like that have pulled out and yeah. You know, you've got less full-time riders earning big money. There's, you can really tell like who's into the sport and whatever because you're not getting paid to travel around the World Cup and there's no major money and whatever. So basically a lot of the riders that you're seeing the, in Scotland today and this weekend, they're like, they're riders that want to be here for themselves more than yeah. try and come and win the money. Yeah. Which to me, it means a lot more than a few pennies. Yeah. You've got like Steve, Pete and you getting medals and yeah. you don't seem to get the support. The thing is like, I know the BCF are going to hate me for saying this, but the only time they're interested in it is when me, Steve or Tracy do good at World Champs. Yeah. And I mean, that's the only time that they publicise it, that's the only time that they're vaguely interested in it at all, is yeah. when we do good. And any other time lead up to World Championships and that, they're just like, no, nah, I don't want yeah. to know. Do you think it'd make a difference if it was an Olympic sport? Oh yeah, it'd totally make it totally different and people look on it differently. It's more credibility, isn't it? Yeah, it'd, not, it'd make it not look as if we're a load of big kids playing on kids' toys, yeah. which we're not. Yeah. We're out here to do a sport and take it seriously, and, but then again have fun at the same time. Dude, even even in this world, a lot of these guys think like American football or baseball is stupid, but if that's what you're into, who yeah. cares? And why would you care? I don't like. I wouldn't sit here. I love riding my bike, but I like other sports. But I want even if I didn't like like ice skating, say myself, I can still respect the work that goes into it and respect it as a sport. It's not my thing, but I don't see. I wouldn't waste my time saying I hate football. It's so dumb or whatever. Because so what? If you don't like it, then don't do it. But you know, you can still respect the training and the dedication that someone has or the love for a sport or anything. You have your own mechanic to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Not over here. Right. I don't Not know in Europe. My dad's coming up. <laughs> we can. He's pretty good. I'm making a break for it. See you when you get back. We'll have an easy weekend this weekend. She's got somebody else doing it for us. Uh, over here, out. I'm helping her out. Yeah. 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 Do you help her out in America as well? No, she's full factory of Foes. Brent Foes takes full care of her there. Hello, my name is Brent Foes, uh, owner of Foes Racing. Um, I'm over the race bike with you and show you what we do as far as getting ready for a race and what the components are and how they work. Uh, we start back here, well, we've got our own rear suspension, a Kernut rear shock, and it's got our own front suspension, which is a Kernut uh, Bose XTD. Um, back here we use a uh, Hayes floating rear brake. Um, it allows under braking, it allows the, the wheel to still float and move around. She's pretty low maintenance, just pretty much clean it, lube it, check all the bolts after, you know, she'll come in for a break mid practice. Yeah. And then um, I'll clean it then, or if it's real muddy like today, I might be cleaning it every couple runs for him, just to, you know, keep the, the dirt and mud off the chain and stuff. And then uh, I'll check all the bolts midday. Every single bolt. Every single bolt midday. And then I'll be here till pretty late, strip the bikes down. Put them back together and then put them and pack everything up for the night. And then they're in bed. I get up at probably six, eat breakfast, and I'm here by seven. Yeah. Put them back together. So, so the same that, thing again tomorrow then. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, yeah. It's long days for me race week, but um, just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Fort William is one of the most demanding courses of the series. After a day's practice, Fionn gave us an insight into the course. It's hard to appreciate just how physically demanding this course really is. A wrong line can cost you seconds. 
and ultimately a win. What's the course like then down here? Pretty good, this bit's really fast. Um, there's a lot of hidden rocks that are kind of just poking out through the top of the soil. Gotta watch out for. Yeah, this bottom it's bit, fast. it's always been like really, really fast and peddly, but at the end of the day, it's at the bottom of the course, so you're gonna be knackered, so yeah. everyone's in the same boat, it's gonna be whose heaviest rolls fastest, <laughs> probably. <laughs> There's a few, actually, a few technical little sections up in the woods. Yeah. You got one, one wooded section that's pretty muddy and there's a lot of roots and stuff that you gotta watch out for. The only bits that you're finding pretty difficult in that, not? Um, touch wood, I'm doing all right. What was your first run line, down like? Pretty sketchy, I don't think it breaks. <laughs> We're breaking too good. Big. Mm. Mm. All of them are big. Probably the hardest bit will be hanging on up top just because of the breaking bumps and the ruts that are developing from people practicing, getting deeper and deeper all the time. And if you've got your weight a little bit wrong, you can either like throw you off the course or just over the bars. The worst thing is that the way that you're supposed to move your weight on your bike to be able to go around the burns better yeah. is to put your weight forwards. But at the same time, here you find it real hard to do that because there's braking bumps just before the berms and that's yeah. where you want to be transferring your weight but the braking bumps are getting so deep that it's going down to the peat underneath so it just kind of stops your wheel yeah, so it's kind of fighting against it really touch really you had any injuries recently don't ask me that no hopefully i'd like to win it It'd be good to win in british isles like yeah definitely First ever World Cup win that'd be. Who's gonna win the women's downhill? Uh, Tracy Moses is gonna win. What about Fiona? Yeah. Uh, she's probably gonna come second or third. Tracy Mosley will probably take this one. Do you reckon Fee could win? Oh yeah, any day. Definitely. She can. Probably Tracy Mosley. I don't know, I think it's gonna be tight between the British girls actually. Yeah. Uh, Fiona Chris is running well, Tracy's riding exceptionally well this year, so uh, I think it's between them two. The top girls are pretty good, aren't they? That's I wouldn't like fast. to think they're catching up with me. Tracy's riding hot. She won last weekend of the day and she won a big bear, so. But Fiona's is right there, just a couple seconds off her, and, you know, Fiona's a little bit. I think she's got a really good shot. Yeah. It'd be pretty bad now, I think. Saturday morning, practice day, the day before the race. The rider pulled out in front of Fionn, sending her into a ditch and knocking her out. Tim, we've got a problem. It's Fionn, I think she's injured. You ever get worried then when she comes back like this? Uh, there's not really an awful lot of point worrying because it doesn't make any difference to how she is. <laughs> oh, that's good. So what did you want to ask? Okay, so for the third time, <laughs> where did you crash? <laughs> Fell over. <laughs> no, I crashed coming out of the woods. Um, someone pulled out in front of me and consequently, consequently? Consequently, <laughs> ended up in a ditch on my head and knocked myself out. Yeah, you got a big bump there. I have. Is that a rock? Yeah, that was a rock hit me. Or I hit a rock even. Any other? Yeah, I hit my, my thigh. Got, it's about twice the size it should be. So you've done your ankle as well? Yeah, it's just a scratch there. Yeah. Scratch. A lot of people get injured a lot of the time, but I'm trying to avoid it. If it happens, it happens. There's nothing you're going to do about it. Filmed Brian Lopes when he started the four cross, and I think he broke his leg. He snapped the burn off his ankle, like snapped his the cap off his ankle bone. Yeah, it can happen to anybody. Still racing tomorrow. Yeah, yeah it's afternoon as well, probably. Yeah. You qualified fourth yesterday. Yeah, it was the best result I ever had in four cross qualifying. I got fourth. 
which was I was pretty pleased with. I was, um, I've noticed this year I've got a better four-cross bike than I've ever had before, and I just basically feel a lot more confident um, in my own ability and just to ride better. For Fionn, getting injured is just part and parcel of racing. She then went on to race in the four-cross finals that evening. What makes someone carry on through the pain barrier? It's certainly not for the money. I've got a lot of self-motivation, like it's what I want to do for myself as opposed to for anybody else, for sponsors or whatever. Right the watch the gate. Four crosses where four riders start at once <laughs> with <a> help <laughs> over um, jumps and berms and combination of other little obstacles like drops and stuff. Um, and it's first one to the bottom wins as opposed to against the clock. So, yeah, I was feeling really good and like the injuries I got from the downhill on that morning just kind of didn't help me a lot. <laughs> it's in the actual race. Yeah, it's just a painful race. Race day didn't start too well. In the morning, Fionn's qualifying run was a nightmare. She crashed at the top, hitting a rolling rock and sending her off the course, and again hitting her leg. But she continued to race that afternoon. You don't get that much time off in the middle of the day when you're at a World Cup. You'd have to do one thing, that's to practice, race and hopefully win. Uh, a little beat up this morning. It was really sore when I woke up. Yeah. Um, got massive bruise on my leg. It'll be alright. It's a black eye too. Do you think it's going to affect your race, your performance? Um, hopefully, I did a practice run this morning and like my leg was because it's swollen up so much, it was hitting on my seat a lot, which hurt. But I think hopefully the drum will help me a little bit. So what's going through your mind at the moment? I'm just trying to go, go have a steady run and just do the best I can basically. So I like to kind of be on my own. Um, I usually like move on blow usually for my phone or whatever. And just go through the course in my head and try and work out what I've got to do as good as I can. A lot of it is mental, like thinking you're the best and being the best in your own mind. Um, but then there is the physical side of it and I know from what other people have told me, um, I know myself that I can ride as good, if not better, than all the other women in the world. So, just need to put it all together on one day.
Maybe she shouldn't have raced with such a bad injury, but as she says... To me, a bad race is better than no race at all, because at least I still have some points in the bag and got a chance of catching up through the season. And she still managed to come seventh. We couldn't get a word with Fionn after the race, as she went to hospital to get her leg checked out. But we got a word from her teammate, Will Corrie. He went to see David Beckham like playing a game with a big bruise on his head. Have you seen Fionn's head? It's like massive. I, I cannot believe she was able to put such a good run together today. You know, it was just absolutely phenomenal. But you know, Fionn's kind of like that. You know, she'll she'll do the job she needs to, and like she she recovered really well from that accident that she had in practice. You know, and just it's absolutely phenomenal the effort that she put in today just to, to actually pull through and get some good runs in. You know. We left Scotland and made the long journey home. We arranged to meet up with Fionn the following day, back home in Shrewsbury. How did the race go in the day? Um, it was really painful. It hurt a lot. Just to like ride my bike, just because um, every time I went around a corner or tried to pedal or whatever, my leg just wanted to give up or I hit it on the seat or something and it was just, it was painful. <laughs> and I've got this one, which is pretty nice. He's still going to France then, despite your injuries? And... Yeah, yeah, I'll be, I'm heading out tomorrow morning. So after France, is it back home here then? Yeah, I come home for one day, and then I'm off to America for two and a half months. Like racing every week? Racing weekend. every week. I think I've got two weeks off in the whole time I'm over. Like two weekends off. Even though we're injured, if you can still, if there's any way you can still ride a bike, then basically you have to, so. Keep the sponsors happy. Yeah, I keep the sponsors happy and myself more than anything. Just because I want to do as good as anybody else and hopefully still go and try and win the series. I don't really say that anything else is a sacrifice just because I can't do it because I'm doing something that I want to do more. So, yeah. this is my life. <laughs> Since we finished filming, Fiona's gone on to win rounds three and four of the World Cup series in Mount St Anne and Grouse Mountain, both in Canada. She is currently lying second overall with the final round to come in Capron, Austria. Another British girl is leading the series, Tracy Mosley. <laughs> that looks like Michelle. <laughs> the eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was my head. <laughs> no. Fionn's brother. Kinder. Yo. 